Hi everybody. Okay, we're going to start the uh, this morning's uh, webinar. Uh, on topics today, we will give a company update on 800 Super Holdings, Croatia's retail trust, and then we'll just do a light uh, non-rated touch on the companies that you can uh, invest in with regards to Pokemon Go. Uh, just note that for today, our analysts for 800 Super Holdings and Croatia's retail trust are out at a uh, different seminar right now. So. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email us, but um, unfortunately we won't be able to uh, do much answering of questions as the analyst related, um, they're out at the moment. Okay, so for 800 Super, um, just leave it up for a while, you can uh, take a look and read the slide for a while. Um, we're still having a neutral with a target price of 74 cents, uh, previous was uh, 82 cents and the last close was 74 cents. Okay, uh, moving on. For Croatia's retail trust as well, um, we're still maintaining a accumulate with a target price of 93 cents. Last was 86 cents. Um, yeah, you can read the rest of the slide yourself. Okay. Moving on, so uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys have seen over the uh, past couple of days how um, popular this uh, particular game is and um, uh, so some of you might want to try and capitalize on this uh, on this game and so this uh, following will be a list of companies in the US from which to be able to uh, try and uh, capitalize on the success of the Pokemon Go. So first of all, um, it's a, what is Pokemon Go? Um, I'm sure many of you, as I say, have seen on social media as well as the news about this uh, game. It's a massively popular free-to-play game which makes use of augmented reality as well as the loca uh, your GPS location. Um, it was first released in July 2016 in USA as well as uh, August 2016 for Singapore as well as other countries. So I know there's a Bloomberg article that recently stated, uh, talked about you know uh, supposedly the death of uh, Pokemon Go and how it's uh, declining in popularity. But I think to put it in perspective and context, um, the daily active user peaked at uh, 45 million a day in July and has come down, uh, lost about 15 million daily players to about 30 million a day. Um, whether or not it will continue to fall further, it's uh, and what at what level it will plateau at, it's uh, unknown for now because it's only about two months, less than two months old. But uh, to put it into context, uh, Twitter actually has a 300 million monthly active users. So if you were to take the 30 million active users currently uh, playing the game, and you know times 30 days, that puts the uh, game at uh, 900 million active users, which uh, monthly, which is uh, still about triple the amount of Twitter users. So I think the the call for the death of the game is a bit premature. Um, but at what level it will plateau at, we're still not sure. Even if it loses another 10 million uh, daily active users, that still puts it at double Twitter's monthly active users. So uh, it's quite successful, this game. It managed to generate about USD 200 million in its first month, and it's estimated to generate about a USD 10 million a day at the moment. So um, you can see it's, it's earning quite a bit of money. Um, but what you, can you do to invest in this? So Niantic Incorporated is the, actually the company that's responsible for the creation. The founder John Hank is the one that actually helped develop Google Earth. Um, originally Niantic started off as a startup inside Google itself and was spun off in 2015 with Google, Nintendo, uh, Pokemon company investing about USD 30 million in the company. Unfortunately, it's a private entity at the moment, so it's not really possible for you to buy any shares in Niantic. Uh, the other way to go directly is uh, Nintendo, which is listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Um, I'm sure most of you guys have heard by now about how when the game was initially released, the share price actually surged about 100%, but followed by about 30% fall after um, Nintendo came out with a clarification that they do not actually own the game. Uh, they're not actually involved in the creation of the game, nor the maintenance, and so they only receive a, a fraction of the, the uh, revenue when it comes to Pokemon Go. 
Uh, just touch on what's this uh, Pokemon company. They're actually the marketing and licensing of the Pokemon franchise. It's also a private entity that was started by Nintendo and Game Freak, who actually own the rights to the Pokemon franchise itself. So um, you can see from this, there's no actual way to directly invest in Pokemon Go itself. But if you are thinking of how to capitalize on the success of this game, um, following will give you a list of to varying degrees of which these uh, companies can can actually benefit from Pokemon Go, whether directly or indirectly. So first of all, the ones that would be the most direct way of actually uh, capitalizing on Pokemon Go's revenue would be Apple and Google. They act as what I call the toll bridges. So whenever uh, someone were to make an in-app purchase inside the game, uh, the app stores actually, the different app stores, whether it's the iTunes or the Google Play Store, they actually take a cut of these transactions that are made. And the cut can actually get as high as 30% of the transactions. So um, at the current level, that amounts to about uh, USD 200 million revenue, uh, and uh, for the for the first month. So uh, you can see from this that Apple and Google's cut of these uh, profits might actually be even higher than Nintendo's share of the profit because uh, Apple and Google actually take a cut from the revenue, the top line, whereas Nintendo only takes a share of the bottom line after all the uh, expenses for maintaining and uh, creating the game is uh, paid off. So right now, Apple's uh, current price is 106.94 USD. Um, we uh, actually released a, a couple months ago an initiation uh, buy call on Apple. The price when we released it at was about $92 uh, dollars, and it's since run up to about $106 dollars, and our target price for this company was about $114. Dollars. So um, we're still currently positive on the strength of its uh, brand as well as the loyal customer base and solid balance sheet. Um, but if you're talking purely about Pokemon Go, then Google would actually be the company more likely to benefit from the game itself, um, seeing as there are more Android users than Apple users, and as well as the fact that uh, Niantic actually started out as a startup inside Google itself and was spun off by them and that they invested in Niantic directly. So um, it's likely that they also hold, hold uh, part ownership in Niantic and that allows them to actually benefit not just from the revenue but from the profits as well. So um, we're also positive on Google with a strong brand uh, and its large user base as well as solid, solid balance sheet. Um, yeah, so moving on. So besides the toll bridge companies, there's also the infrastructure or what we call the, the uh, wireless data carriers for, for uh, the US. So GPS location, if those of you who are familiar with the game, uh, is required for to actually play the game itself. And while the total data usage is not really very high, um, it's estimated to be about 10 to 20 MB per hour. Um, assuming an hour a day of gameplay, that's about 600 MB usage per person. And from the data, or the chart shown below, you can see that the average USA uh, data consumed on your on your mobile phone is actually about 1.6 gigabytes from the cellular network data itself. Uh, so if you think about it, playing an hour a day actively pushes the average user up past the two gigabyte point, which uh, might cause some players to actually decide to upgrade their plans from maybe they used to have a two gigabyte plan. Some of them might choose to push it past the two gigabyte to the three gigabyte plan instead. So in that case, um, your mobile carriers might actually benefit. So here are a list of some of the mobile carriers. So first one we have on our list is uh, T-Mobile, uh, current price 45.96 USD. Um, it's actually the third largest wireless carrier in terms of market share. Um, overall, we feel that at the current uh, PER versus its uh, competitors, it's uh, considered fairly, uh, fairly valued. Um, they have recently actually tried to capitalize on the game by offering data exemption for Pokemon Go game for about a year. Uh, whether or not this will have any traction remains to be seen. As mentioned, the game is only released in July, so most of the quarterly earnings will not actually factor in any, uh, any uh, effect from the game at all. Next is uh, Verizon, which is the second largest wireless carrier. Actually, the first and largest, uh, which is uh, AT&T, there are difference of less than a percentage point between the two of them. And depending on which month you take a look at uh, or which quarter, they actually um, kind of overtake each other as the first and second. So essentially, they're about the same. So for, for Verizon, um, 
they actually were recovering from a worker strike in April, which negatively affected that quarter's earnings. Um, but since then, the share price has recovered somewhat. Um, but overall, we are quite positive on Verizon still, on the back of its um, solid uh, fundamentals. And you can uh, quite happy with their dividend as well, which at 4.34%. Is uh, relatively uh, good for U.S. company, but uh, also that they've managed to actually increase every single dividend uh, that they've given since uh, year on year since 20, uh, 2009. Similarly, as mentioned, uh, AT&T, um, the current price at 40.68 USD with a PER of 17.57, uh, yield of 4.72, which is also pretty good for a U.S. company. Um, Again, as mentioned, they are the largest wireless carrier, but um, essentially equivalent to Verizon. Um, overall, we're still positive. Um, recently, they actually announced new data plans. Uh, first is a removal of this, uh, the, their cheapest entry-level plan, which had a 300 MB. Uh, and they also, for their uh, cheapest plan, they actually halved the data given. So it used to be a 2 gigabyte plan, now it's a 1 gigabyte plan. So um, that may prompt some users to upgrade to their to their second cheapest plan, which might overall increase the revenue from them. And they actually have an astounding 30-year uh, history of increasing their dividend year on year. So that's through different financial crises and, uh, and crashes in the market. They still have been able to increase that dividend uh, every single year. Next. Um, the Pokemon Go might actually have, uh, the theory is, have some halo effect for certain uh, related products. Uh, so these companies, while they may not directly benefit from the game itself, um, they might benefit from this halo effect. So the first one is this uh, that we listed is Best Buy. So overall, we are positive on this company. Um, for those who are not familiar with the company, you can think of it as akin to something to Singapore's Challenger. And uh, well, so the the thinking is that uh, Pokemon Go is a strain on smartphone batteries, and that might be create demand for players to go and buy portable chargers and other accessories. Um, I think the culture in the U.S. might be a little different from Singapore. You might not have many people willing to go online and ship a Xiaomi uh, portable charger or something from them. Instead, they might choose to go and get it at their maybe their local Best Buy or even. Um, do it through their e-commerce through there. So um, recently, Best Buy has actually been had been facing headwinds due to the shift to e-commerce. But you can see from their latest uh, quarter earnings that they've actually taken steps to adapt to this uh, shift to e-commerce instead of uh, local brick and mortar stores. And that they managed to grow their grow their online sales from 8.6 to 10.6 percent of their domestic revenue uh, quarter on quarter. So um, actually, they re very recently released their earnings, uh, and they actually beat consensus estimates by quite a bit, uh, 57 cents compared to 43 EPS. Uh, and they actually sent the share price soaring up by 19.6%. So overall, we're quite positive on uh, Best Buy. Uh, yeah. So the next one is also GameStop, which is a um, video game retailer. They sell video game hardware as well as software in the form of physical disk and such. Um, short term, we are positive on GameStop because um, Pokemon Go it seems to have revitalized interest in the franchise, uh, in the Pokemon franchise. So Nintendo, for the month of July, actually reported that their 3DS uh, cons hardware console, portable console, uh, actually managed to grow 80% year on year in the month of July. Um, as well as the games uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby as well as Alpha Sapphire actually also grew 80% year on year in the month of July. And uh, the thing that really shows that Pokemon Go seems to have revitalized interest in this in the Pokemon franchise is that all games such as the Pokemon X and Y, which were actually released three years ago in 2013, actually had their sales grow 200% uh, year on year in the month of July. Um, so with the new Pokemon Sun and Moon games due to release in November, um, and the all this uh, increase in sales of old games, that might translate to a short-term boost for GameStop. But um, overall, in the long term, with the trend for video gaming uh, moving to digital downloads and cloud computing, cloud gaming, um, long term, they may be weighed down. Um, do note that GameStop has actually uh, really just released their, their quarterly earnings and they fell uh, quite significantly. I think they dropped about 10 plus percent on, on Friday night. But that's, um, again, without the, uh, the July or August uh, sales since Pokemon Go was released. So 
we might want to keep a lookout to see if that might actually translate to higher sales figures. That if it does, um, this ten percent fall it might cause a, a trading opportunity for this uh, counter. Okay, so. Lastly, for retail-wise, um, there's this company called Five Below Incorporated. So they are actually a uh, what they do is they actually buy uh, buy merch buy and sell merchandise that's targeted at teens and preteens. So um, what their company is focused on is uh, that they they try and identify what is the latest trend or hype and they try to uh, react quickly and get merchandise that's related to the latest trend or hype and try to market it to the teens or preteens. So things like your toys, your cards, stickers, balloons, uh, notebooks, etc. this kind of uh, things. They, so actually recently, um, the company was able to react very fast. As I mentioned, Pokemon Go only released in um, July of 2016. And very quickly they were already able to acquire this Pokemon related merchandise and sell uh, start selling it to to those who are interested in in purchasing this uh, Pokemon related uh, things maybe as gifts or for themselves so there's reports of some stocks even selling out already so short term you might also see similar to GameStop that they might be able to see a, a boost in their their revenue um, Long-term earnings, however, might be a bit more subjective because it's very trend or hype focused. So it depends uh, again on whether or not there's uh, past Pokemon Go, whether there's any hype or trends that uh, they they are able to to uh, identify and and take advantage of. Um, so far, the company's track record seems to be quite good when it comes to identifying and reacting quickly to these trends. Um, but if you are investing for the long term, possibly you might want to pay more attention to uh, the ongoings of this company. Uh, in the short term, we do expect that Pokemon Go might might lead to a, a uh, revenue uh, boost for in the, in the short term, maybe one to two quarters, as long as the Pokemon Go hype continues to, to carry on. Okay, so last um, category of companies that might benefit from this is uh, what we call the location companies. As mentioned earlier, Pokemon Go is a very location-based game with uh, players having to move about quite a lot in order to uh, to actually play the game. So um, the first company that we have is this company called Six Flag Entertainment. Um, the current price is about 49.87 USD, P about 27.89 with a dividend yield of 4.65. So what this company does is they actually um, own and manage theme parks in the US. Um, so so uh, things like your roller coasters, etc., these kind of things, they, they operate these kind of theme parks. So the company is trying to capitalize on the popularity to draw crowds to their theme parks. They actually managed to create a player guide of all the Pokestops and gyms within their theme parks. And some of them, I think they tried to organize little small tours to around the, the different Pokestops to try and encourage players to come to their theme parks and... Um, and catch Pokemon as well as uh, play on the roller coasters and such. So there's apparently a lot of angry dodo um, quotes from uh, families who decide to who have been playing. You know, the parents play, the kids play, and they use that as family bonding time. Um, so they actually try to entice these uh, families who are spending time together playing Pokemon to, hey, why don't you come down to the to the theme park at the same time and um, take a roller coaster ride, play around, spend the whole day there, catch Pokemon at the same time. So um, Right now, however, based on their fundamentals, I think it's fairly valued, but um, you have to see again the next quarterly earnings to see if maybe if Pokemon Go has actually managed to boost this company's uh, revenue by, by being able to attract all these families to come down and play, uh, play the game inside their theme parks. Uh, similarly, if you don't want to have a you know, for, for, for most uh, outsiders, you don't really know Six Flag Entertainment. A similar play that you can do for a more well-known company could possibly be Disney. Uh, Disney is also operates a lot of theme parks, and while they don't actually do anything Pokemon Go related, um, it could pos their theme parks could possibly benefit from similar um, similar uh, the themes that the Six Flags holdings uh, in terms of benefiting from Pokemon Go. Okay, so this is the one I'm actually most excited about, which is a McDonald Corporation. So um, the current share price is about $114 uh, with a PE of 21.81. Um, historically, this is probably on the more uh, slightly lower side in terms of uh, PE valuation. 
uh, with a dividend yield of 3.11%. Um, they have also have over 20 years of history of increasing their dividend every single year. So uh, overall, we're quite positive on this. And I'm sure most of you might have read by now, but if not, um, McDonald Japan actually partnered with Niantic, the creators of Pokemon Go, to make 3,000 of their McDonald restaurants, uh, Poke Stops and Gyms. So actually, this um, uh, it might have increased traffic over to their their restaurants, um, and actually, there seems to be some evidence of that at least in July. So in July, McDonald Japan actually reported same store sales uh, jumped actually twenty seven percent year on year. With uh, when interviewed, the franchise owners attribute at least ten percent of this uh, jump to be directly to the game related to the game. Uh, in the lead up to the Pokemon's Ghost release, Pokemon Ghost release in Japan, uh, Pokemon uh, McDonald Japan actually started serving Pokemon uh, Happy Meals. So they gave uh, Pokemon related uh, toys in their Happy Meals, and that actually uh, I think helped boost a lot of sales of Happy Meals in Japan as well. So um, if the search were to prove continue to prove successful for McDonald's Japan, uh, McDonald's might decide to implement this globally because currently this uh, partnership is only existent in Japan itself. Um, and if they were to do this, this might actually entice uh, a lot of uh, players to to maybe go down into the Pokemon I mean, into the McDonald's to just uh, sit down, buy a drink, or or even maybe even a meal and and play the Pokemon Go. Um, I think there's there's quite a lot of uh, you can see if you were to visit even past midnight to some of the 24-hour McDonald's shops, you can see people sitting there and um, even if they buy a one dollar Coke, that's still one dollar more than normally uh, McDonald's would have earned. So I think anecdotally, that's that's some evidence that uh, Pokemon Go does actually increase traffic to a lot of these uh, fast food restaurants. Uh, to know also that. Um, the U.S. is quite different from Singapore, where as in Singapore, you have a lot of places that are very close by to each other in terms of pokey stops, uh, where players can just sit down and lounge around. I'm sure some of you have seen on social media the uh, pictures of uh, Yishun or Haokang, where people are just running from two place to place. Um, in I think in U.S., the places are a lot more spread out, and if people are tired, there's a lot less places for them to just I think sit around and and then do nothing while they catch the game. So I think there is. Uh, ability for, for McDonald's to capitalize on, um, in a sense, luring customers into their, their restaurants to be able to uh, try and sell them more uh, fast food or drinks as refreshments after walking around and playing the game for such a long time. So lastly, um, we we'll talk about Starbucks. So Starbucks current share price is about 57.29 with a PE of 32, uh, a dividend yield of 1.4. So overall, we're positive on Starbucks on similar reasons as McDonald's. Um, again, people might want to go into a Starbucks to sit down and um, refresh themselves, hide away from the weather, uh, get a coffee while they're playing the game, etc. And while Starbucks doesn't have the same um, deal with Niantic that McDonald's does. If the experiment by McDonald's Japan proves to be successful, um, other companies might choose to, to try and replicate, try and partner with Niantic to replicate the same um, same deal that McDonald's has. Um, but that's all speculative for as of now, which is why it's uh, kind of the last uh, stock bench of now. Um, but if, if they do, then that might actually help draw more people to Starbucks and and uh, increase their, their revenue. Yeah. So overall, um, these are the list of companies that we have with regards to um, Pokemon Go and what are the uh, potential companies, uh, kind of a top 10 to 11 companies that might possibly uh, benefit from this uh, Pokemon Go uh, success and phenomena. Um, yeah. Uh, are there any questions at this moment? Okay, so we have a question for how long we think this Pokemon hype would last. Um, well, personally, at the rate they're uh, going, they did lose about um, one third of their players from the peak to now. Um, but they seem to be uh, plateauing at about this uh, around 30 million to maybe um, higher end of 20, 20 plus million at the moment. Um, not very sure, but longevity-wise, I think 
Pokemon the Niantic still has a very deep well when it comes to the franchise in terms to continue to uh, excite their player base. Um, you have things updates coming in the near future, things like Pokemon trading, um, battles uh, between players each other. I think uh, one criticism of the game that some critics, game critics has is that it's a bit shallow, but with future updates that might actually entice players to come back again, or for those players who are currently playing to continue playing. Um, and besides that, they also announced that they're going to release some of the rare Pokemons, what they call the legendary Pokemons that are going to come out soon. So um, I think, and also, uh, the fact that they have many, many, many games iterations. I think right now there's over 600 plus different Pokemons, of which only about 150 are less than 150 are released at the moment. So uh, there is actually a very deep well. If the company manages to, I think, uh, manage their update schedule well and uh, the maintenance of the game, I do think that it could last for quite a while. After all, you look at things like um, Candy Crush and Clash Royale. Uh, just to put in perspective, Candy Crush actually. Uh, um, in terms of how much Apple earned from Candy Crush, they earned in the first month only about um, $25 million. Uh, Clash Royale, actually, the next pop most popular game, actually earned them $125 million. So for Pokemon Go to, to earn you know, $200 million in the first, uh, first month alone, it really far outpaces these two very popular mobile games. And these two popular mobile games, while you might not hear that much on the news, they are still pretty popular among the people who play. So I think that it might last for a while longer, but it really depends on how Niantic is able to um, maintain and up continue to update the game. Hi, okay, so is, uh, the question is, is there any SGX listed companies that might benefit from the Pokemon craze? Um, well, like I mentioned, uh, I guess one of the things would be the same way your infrastructure um, in terms of the data. Uh, so possibly your, the same way the US telcos might benefit, you might take a look at whether the, the, the Singapore telcos also might benefit from such a thing. Uh, but I think in terms of, uh, of data-wise, uh, Singapore being quite a... a Small, um, well connected city in the sense that there's a lot of uh, Wi-Fi is everywhere. It's uh, pos it's they may not benefit as much because I think a lot of Singaporeans are able to to tap on to Wi-Fi all around. So the data usage directly from your mobile carriers alone might not be that significant. That it might cause players to decide to bump up their their mobile plans. Um, yeah, more research will need to be done on that. But um, yeah, uh, if any of them will to benefit. Would, I would say would probably be most likely be the telcos. Okay, uh, if there's no further questions, I think we should end the, the webinar here. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, reminder, the next week is a public holiday, so we won't be having our webinar, but you can uh, join us again the following week. Um, if any of you have any questions regarding the first two uh, company updates, you can uh, feel free to just drop us an email. When the related analysts are back, I'm sure they will uh, reply your, your queries. Okay, thank you.